Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, thanks for joining me on this wet video apparently today, these poor crews getting absolutely soaked as a uh, armoured vehicle crew commander back in my day. I remember how much it sucked doing light firing in uh, ranges like this, or just operating armoured fighting vehicles in the rain in general. It's not fun, I feel sorry for these crews, but today we are talking about the BVP M80 series of fighting vehicles and I have to admit I absolutely had no idea these vehicles even existed. Someone mentioned in the comment section they wanted me to do a video on one. I was like what the heck is that? And I realized it's somewhat of a interesting little BMP derivative uh, that really is a Cold War hero I think for the most part and a bit of a uh, Eastern Bloc shaped Yugoslavian beast and although it looks very BMP like the modernized versions of this vehicle are actually quite interesting which is what you saw at the beginning of the video because it's kind of turning something that once was very simplistic to a more modernized and capable vehicle particularly in the demands of today which are very complicated infantry fighting vehicles are under a lot of demand and requirements one of the biggest examples of how difficult it is to design an ifv is of course the pentagon wars yes the bradley fighting vehicle and this is no exception the uh, bvp m80 is a multitude of different designs and series of classification of what it can and cannot do and I have to give it a little bit of grace because uh, this vehicle has been around for some time and it is a modified version of a BMP, but it's also not. And I think a lot of people give it a hard time because they just say, well, the BVP M80 is just a BMP. And it's not. It's really not. Before we get into today's video, though, let me know what your favorite infantry fighting vehicle is. I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. Of course, most of you know my two favorites are the Warrior, because I've worked actually with it in the British Army, and the CV-90, because I had the pleasure of working with BA Systems looking at the CV-90. You can go check out that video if you want to go check it out, but uh, let's get into this. So, the BVP M80 series did not come about by chance. It was born from Yugoslavia's unique position during the Cold War, a socialist country, but one that refused to fully aligned with the Soviet Union. This independence from the Eastern Bloc shaped Yugoslavia's military doctrine and its need for self-reliance in developing its own equipment. The story begins in 1948 when Yugoslavia under Marshal Josip Broz Tito broke away from the Soviet sphere of influence. This led to a mix of Western and Soviet equipment in its military, including the American Shermans and even Soviet T-34s. By the 1960s it became clear that relying on imports alone just was not sustainable. Yugoslavia needed vehicles tailored to its specific needs, especially given its mountainous terrain and changing nature of warfare. By the late 1960s, the Soviet Union introduced the BMP-1, a revolutionary infantry fighting vehicle. Some will debate that, but I do think for its time it was very, very good at what it needed to do. It demonstrated how much mechanized infantry could operate alongside tanks while offering firepower and protection. Yugoslavia saw the value in such a vehicle, but chose not to adopt the BMP-1 directly. Instead, it pursued its own design, and this is why I respect it so much. It incorporates the lessons from both Soviet and Western doctrines. They're kind of hodgepodging two different doctrines completely together to make their own vehicle. That's really cool, and a very unique way of doing things. You don't see that very often. The result was the BVP M80, a vehicle designed to suit Yugoslavia's terrain and military needs while showcasing the country's ability to produce advanced equipment independently. It was a very bold move for a country balancing between East and West, but it set the stage for a vehicle that would serve for decades and even to this day being upgraded. Development of the BVP M80 series began in 1969 as Yugoslavia sought to create a very formidable infantry fighting vehicle that matched modern standards of the East and the West, and the prototype was completed in 1974 and publicly displayed a year later at a May military parade in Belgrade. However, <laughs> as always, production delays meant that the BVP M80 didn't actually enter service until 1979. The initial version of the BVP M80 was powered by a French-made HS1152 engine, providing 191 kilowatts of power. This early model set the foundation for what was to come as to be soon replaced by the M80A variant in 1984. The M80A featured a more powerful FAMOS, or F -A -M -O -S, 10V003 V10 diesel engine, which was locally produced and delivered a lot more power, 315 horsepower to be precise. This improvement addressed mobility and endurance issues, increasing its speed and range, something that you definitely want to have with an infantry fighting vehicle. 
Both models incorporated elements from the Western and Soviet designs, but it was more heavily pronounced on the M80A variant of a more Soviet design because of the way in which they adapted a modernized feel to a BMP chassis. The suspension system was inspired by the French AMX 10P, while the actual layout of the vehicle really mirrored the Soviet BMP series. Despite these influences, the BVP M80 was uniquely Yugoslav, built to navigate the rugged Balkan terrain and meet the demands of mechanized infantry forces. Approximately 800 units of the BVP M80 and M80 Alpha were built before Yugoslavia's dissolution in the early 1990s. And these vehicles formed the backbone of the Yugoslav People's Army's mechanized forces, representing a significant step forward in the country's defense industry and being able to produce their own systems. And they were quite well respected for this. Now, the BVP M80 has certainly gone into multitudes of different variants and upgrades. Of course, the M80 Alpha, designed practically in mind, offering a bit of a balance of firepower, mobility, troop carrying capacity, but what makes them a little bit more unique? Well, let's start with the layout. A lot of people do relevance them to just a BMP, but it features a steel hull with sloped armor for improved protection against small arms fire and shell fragments. While the armor could resist 20 mm rounds from the front, it was only effective against small arms on the side and rear. The vehicle was built to accommodate a crew of three, a driver, commander, and gunner, along with seven infantry soldiers fully equipped. The very reliable torsion bar suspension that was inspired by the French MX-10P was renowned by its crews. Paired with rubber-tired road wheels for smooth operation even on uneven terrain, and the tracks were very similar to the BMP. The upgraded diesel engine provided a top speed of 65 km an hour on the M80 Alpha and a land range of 500 km without having to refuel, which was pretty impressive for its time. Additionally, the vehicle was fully amphibious and worked very well in propulsion in water at speeds of up to 8 km an hour. For a small little vehicle like this, that's quite impressive. It also did very well in snowy terrains and was able to operate in minus 40 degrees Celsius without any major changes. And its armament was another defining feature. The M80 was equipped with a 20mm Hispano Sousa M55 autocannon capable of engaging aerial targets and ground targets up to 1500 meters and normally around about 2000 meters with modified ammunition. It also featured a twin Malukta anti-tank guided missile and a 7.62mm PK team coaxial machine gun. While the M80's armaments was effective for its time, the later M80 Alpha retained the same weapon systems but benefited from improved reliability and engine performance. Together, these features made the series very versatile for the Yugoslav People's Army. Now, the true test of any military vehicle really comes from, of course, combat. How did it actually perform? Well, it definitely saw extensive use during the Yugoslav Wars of the 1990s. As the country fragmented into independent states, these vehicles became central to the mechanized forces and newly formed armies. Deployed across a wide range of terrain from urban centers to mountainous regions, the vehicle played a huge role in troop transport and fire support. The crews actually really enjoyed operating these vehicles. Its amphibious capabilities were particularly useful in the river-laden landscapes of the Balkans, enabling forces to cross waterways without additional preparations or bridges. However, the conflicts also highlighted the vehicle's limitations. While the M80's 20mm cannon and anti-tank missiles were effective against lightly armored targets, they really did struggle against modern tanks for obvious reasons and heavily fortified positions or buildings. Additionally, the vehicle's armor offered very little protection against RPGs, which was one of the biggest threats of the time, and other modern anti-tank weapons, a vulnerability that became very evident during urban engagements. Despite these challenges though, they still proved to be a very reliable workhorse and the infantry really enjoyed them. But its key factor was its mobility and troop carrying capacity, allowing it to remain relevant throughout these conflicts and of course still to this day. By the end of the wars, the M80 series had been used in multiple factions including Serbia, Croatia and Bosnia, underscoring its importance in the region's military history. By the 2010s, the BVP M80 series was really showing its age though. To address this, Serbian defense engineers introduced the M80AB1, a modernized version aiming at extending the vehicle's service life and improving its combat capabilities. The most noticeable upgrade was its firepower. The original 20mm cannon was replaced with a 30mm automatic cannon mounted to a new one-man turret. This gave the vehicle the ability to engage heavier targets more effectively. The twin missiles were also upgraded to the 2T5 variant, offering a maximum range of now 5,000 meters and improved guidance systems. 
Armor protection received significant attention. As you can see on the side of these vehicles, they are packed full of additional plates that were added to the hull and the turret, increasing resistance to 30mm rounds at the front and 14.5mm rounds on the sides. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, and it's really not, but you've got to compare it to what its predecessor was, it's quite a significant jump. The vehicle also combined modern fire suppression systems and MBC protection systems. The vehicle offers far greater survivability than its predecessors. Other improvements included a new fire control system with day and night capabilities, enabling better accuracy and situational awareness. The vehicle also features a 360 degree turret traverse system, allowing the gunner to engage targets a lot more effectively, even on the move with stabilization. These upgrades ensure that the vehicle remains very relevant for modern conflicts, proving that even the older designs can certainly evolve to meet new challenges. Some of you may say, well, we're polishing a pig here, but I don't agree. This has somewhat been completely changed and modified, particularly even with the rear door systems. This particular one has two small rear doors, but some of the others have drop ramps, which I think is pretty cool. And that larger caliber makes a big difference. 30 millimeters, I've worked with 30 millimeter Raden on Warrior. They pack a punch, certainly more than a 20 millimeter gun. And I talked a little about this on my live stream recently, but there's a weird compromise between that sort of, do we want lots of smaller ammunition to engage or larger ammunition we've talked about 50 millimeter coming into the world of the americans right now and their ifes i personally would kind of go around the 35 millimeter mark you know cv90 certainly utilizing that incredible 35 millimeter but i think 30 millimeter for this vehicle is certainly a formidable platform and caliber to definitely challenge whatever's going to come across it now, like any military vehicle, it does have its strengths and weaknesses, even in its modern form. I think we all have to agree, simplicity and mobility for a vehicle of this kind is very important. Just like the BMP, they just work. They could go anywhere, they're very capable of getting a high speed, getting troops where they need to go. The torsion bar suspension, very, 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 very good on this vehicle, and amphibious capability is also a big game changer. It is highly adaptable for, particularly back in the day, Yugoslavia's rugged and river-filled terrain, but it still applies even to today. The ability to transport seven fully armed soldiers while providing fire support enhances its operational utility, but in a modernized variant, we're starting to reduce the number of soldiers we can put inside of there. Approximately five to six can be placed in the back now with the modified compartment. The seats are modified a little bit, but you can actually get eight people in there, but it's tight. You've got to think of the equipment that troops are carrying. Uh, you know, Western world soldiers would be a little bit more unaccustomed to a vehicle of this kind, whereas, you know, I think other countries that are a little bit more lean in their equipment we're probably squeeze in there quite nicely but it certainly would not be comfortable but it's not meant to be comfortable you're the infantry of course though the armor is also not a huge change yes it's certainly an upgrade but for modern day standards it really lacks behind some of the higher caliber ifes out there and while adequate for protection against small arms fire and some smaller auto cannons it remains extremely vulnerable to contemporary anti-tank weapons and ieds the original 20mm cannon, while versatile, lacks that punch of the 30mm or 40mm cannons used by other vehicles of its era, but if it's being addressed with the MATA B1 and those upgraded missiles, that's a big win for the vehicle. Of course, other platforms can be placed on there, like the AGS-30 that you can see on top of there, the grenade launcher, and the optics on this system are also being significantly upgraded. I think the crews are really going to enjoy this. Um, it's simplistic, right? It's not a huge amount of tech. It doesn't need to be a huge amount of tech. But it's an upgrade that I really do think brings this vehicle into a formidable setup for an infantry fighting vehicle of today. Is it the best? Absolutely not. I and mean, I don't think they really expect it or want it to be. But it can keep up. Ultimately, the BVP M80 series excels, though, in its mobility and the versatility, but requires strong modernization to remain competitive on today's battlefield. Of course, after the breakup of Yugoslavia, the series of vehicles found a bit of a second life with successor states. Serbia retained the largest fleet, using the vehicles for both active service and training. Croatia and Bosnia also incorporated them into their armed forces, often in a lot smaller numbers though. But as you can see from this vehicle being showcased, it has a continued presence and highlights that it's practical for countries with constrained defense budgets but offering a cost-effective solution for mechanized infantry needs. The series stands as a testament to Yugoslavia's ambition to create a military vehicle that was uniquely its own. From its origins during the Cold War to its role in the Yugoslav Wars, its continued use today, the M80 has really proven its value as a very versatile and reliable infantry fighting vehicle. While the vehicle's design may not match the capabilities of modern IFEs, 
it's fully adaptable and very durable to ensure it has a place in military history today. As Serbia and other nations continue to modernise the platform, its legacy I think is kind of enduring and a bit of a symbol of its resourcefulness and practicality in military engineering. But what do you think of this vehicle? Do you think it's a little bit of a legacy that needs to kind of slowly pass into the shadows or do you think the BVP M80 series is still here for the long haul? Personally, I think it's here for the long haul. I think it should be. I think it's a platform that works. I really love the fact that it was produced at the, you know, design and engineering of Yugoslavia and that they said, you know what, we're going to do this ourselves but we're going to kind of make a bit of a hybrid, a Frankenstein, so to speak, of a BMP. And I actually really like the BMP series. Of course, the BMP-1 had many, many flaws, many faults, and so much hate for the BMPs, but they're a good vehicle for its time. Are these vehicles meant to take on modern IFVs, tanks, anti-tank missiles, drones? No, absolutely not. That's not what they're designed for. You've got to remember, an infantry fighting vehicle, although it says fighting in the name, is really a battle bus. It's to get troops to a location quickly and as safely as best as they can, drop them off and move on or support them in, in fire and support. It is not there to charge forth like the Cold War, which the BMP was kind of designed for in the time, and keep fighting. You know, the tactics and the doctrine of IFVs is very much changed from the days of the BMP, so we can't really put the BVP M80 into the same spectrum of the BMP, because the, the tactics and the doctrine have changed. And with the M80 AB1 and the upgrades they've placed into that vehicle, I really do think it works well with the tactics and the doctrine that we have today. As many of you always like to point out to my videos, a drone can knock out that vehicle. You know, a $100 drone can knock out a $2 million vehicle. Well, these aren't super expensive. And yes, a drone could easily knock one of these out, but there's probably 50 others ready to replace them and at not a huge cost. So thank you so much for joining me on this journey through the history of the BVP M80 series of IFVs. If you did enjoy the video, it's really important that you do click that bell and give me a quick comment. I love reading your comments. If you're new to my channel, it really helps to subscribe as well. I know this is that cliche boring crap that you also hear from every other YouTuber, but the algorithm certainly is fighting against me lately in doing deep dives into military history and technology and equipment. So if you want to look into a vehicle that I should cover next, like this one, someone suggested in the comments of another video, let me know. Put it in that comment section and I'll try my best to get round to making content that you want to see. Until next time, stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.